1987, two Britons achieved a major sporting breakthrough for this country. George O'Dell and Cliff Holland, both in their early 30s, won the World Sidecar Championship, ousting the Germans from their domination of the sport and giving Britain her first world title in the event for nearly a quarter of a century. And they did it without the enormous financial backing that solo British motorcycling stars like Barry Sheen can depend on. For O'Dell, the driver, and the driving force of the partnership, the road to the world title has been a long, hard haul. But this season, he's at last been given something like the sponsorship he needs. And last week, at Brands Hatch, he and Holland went out for their first practice of the 1978 season. I went along and watched them preparing to defend their world championship. Machine satisfaction for Clifford and myself is what we're in it for. You know, riding the bike and getting the results. The thrill is at the end of the, the little bit of light at the end of the tunnel, the winning. That, that is the thrill to win. Odell drives with a steel pin holding his left thigh together after his crash in California last September. He's even had to draw social security to keep going against the richly backed foreign riders. Why sidecar racing, so clearly spectacular, should be a poor relation in Britain is a mystery. Their outfit has more acceleration than a Formula One Grand Prix car. Cliff Holland's job is to keep all three wheels safely on the ground. The passenger obviously does a lot to make the outfit handle very well. A bad passenger can make them handle badly. The most important thing is timing for braking and for acceleration through right corners, left corners. It, it is very critical to get the timing spot on. If you're not in the right place, you're either over the front into the corner before the machine or you're left on the tarmac with the machine gun. We've got the shell off. Now, it looks a bit like a crab with the shell taken off. It looks very strange to the layman. Is it so strange? No, it's it's one of the most wizard part, parts of engineering you're ever likely to see in sidecar racing, I think. Uh, its general specifications are quite intriguing on their own. The motor's a 750 Yamaha. It's four cylinders, six geared, water-cooled, four carburetors. It produces 125 horsepower. You can, can improve on that. On a decent circuit, you know, with good gearing on and reasonable weather conditions, it'll do around 180 mile an hour. It, we're using Formula car tyres and Formula car suspension and a central monocoque chassis. Um, it's all electronic. All the ignition on the motor is all fully electronic. There's no batteries or anything like that. It's all self-generating. No contact breakers or anything like that. It's got a little magic box that a little signal goes from the engine too and it deciphers the rest itself. George, you won the, the World Championship last year against all the odds. How much did you have to spend on this sport in order to win well, that world I, title? I had uh, quite a fair bit of sponsorship from a company, but uh, a small company, and between us we spent around £20,000. You know, all that I earned and <laughs> out of racing, the prize money and star money, but that doesn't, it's not important, money's not important. You know, as long as you can get the money, you can't go racing without the money and the sponsors that are ever involved with anybody racing, they're the great guys. But that machine's £10,000 of machinery. That's one. We've got to have two bikes. We've got to have a spare motor. Don't forget, there's only one guy they're after this year now. That's me. And to, I've got to have the same as what they've got to have a decent go back at them, haven't I? 
the sponsorship we've got, the new sponsorship has come along and, and other sponsors that we've got will pay now to get the show on the road. Is it a sort of 50-50 partnership, or do you play a more important part in getting this bike round, or does George play a more important part? How, how does it, it work out? It is a 50-50 thing. The passenger has to be in the right place at the right time, as the driver is doing the right things, braking, acceleration. Have you ever made any really bad mistakes? I don't think so, not with George. He hasn't said anything, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> is this the only part of cycle racing that you've ever done, the passenger bit, or have you been a, a driver yourself? I did do a little bit of driving in 1972, which wasn't too successful. I crashed a couple of times, so I went back to the chair. <laughs> Going to the chair does sound like an execution, but as they invited me, I could hardly run away. Well, gentlemen, this uh, would seem to be it. I feel a bit like the condemned man. Let's have a go. Oh, well, that's fairly comfortable. <laughs> Come, Keep come the legs further, up. Harry, come what? further a bit more so as your helmet goes down in the okay. cutaway of the fiberglass. Otherwise, over the bumps, he's going to take care of it off. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> oh, you want the one straight? Took this arm out, out in that position. In what position? Bend your elbow. Yeah, that's it. Oh, okay. Keep right. those about like that. Right. Otherwise, you have no toes left. You must be joking. <laughs> All right, okay. then. Well, Let's have look, a go. You look like you're you enjoying this? that. Yeah. It's just fasten your visor a little. There you go, my son. Well, the first thing that strikes me off is acceleration. And the road is coming up at an incredible speed. I'm trying to look up at the same time, I'm trying to keep my head down. Oh. And we go down into the dip. Oh. The acceleration on this thing is really fantastic. This is Druids, this is the big hairpin where they talk about the G-forces leading up. Man. Not bad. And I'm keeping my toes up because if I drop them, I'm going to tear the toe caps out of my boots. And it nearly wrenches your arms out of your sockets as you try to hang on when he breaks. Because he's pushing you forward and you're trying to keep back. We're coming into clearways now, which is the entrance to the home straight. It's hard right all the way around. And he puts the acceleration on. This thing seems to leap right out. And the ground keeps threatening to come up and hit me. It really is the most uncomfortable place to be in the world. And George does turn on the gas, this thing shoots forward like a rocket. It really is like being in a rocket at ground level. As this terrible tarmac keeps sweeping towards me. It's a sensation quite unlike anything else you'll ever experience. Because it's so unreal. The sensation of... Having this road coming towards you at God knows what speed, and this contraption dancing about all over the place, and the G-forces, and I don't know what else, and kneeling on this bit of metal, and trying to keep your sanity. It's all very amazing. Coming into clear ways. This is where he always does put his toe down. And I just hang on for dear life, get down out of the wind, and put my trust in George. Oh, God, you really did open it up then. <laughs> that was some acceleration. He was only messing about before. <laughs> I think it's compensation. <laughs>
Yes, a little touch of the real thing there, wouldn't it? <laughs> Well, the thing is, I think I'm getting used to it. Well, the thing is, no, when we were following it, I noticed a few spots of rain, so I thought the last lap, just in case it rains, I'd better make a decent oh. job of it so you could tell everybody. When you really let it go, it is, it is extraordinary. <laughs> it's, it's, it's lethal, this thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not really a I'm glad to be alive. <laughs> <laughs> well, on one of those laps, we did get round in just 10 seconds outside the lap record, so George wasn't exactly hanging about. The lads were very kind and helpful, and I couldn't resist asking them afterwards what they thought of my efforts. Well, actually, I haven't signed a contract with George. I mean, maybe going to approach you later on, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> How about it, George? Have any chance? Well, to be, to, to be really serious and honestly, Harry, I'll tell you the truth to your face. Considering who you are and what you've done previously, yeah. and you've never seen one, you did bloody excellent. God bless you, sir. God bless you. <laughs> Not Thank as good you. as Clifford, but <laughs> on the same lines. <laughs> Thanks very much. Well, that's fair praise coming from a couple of world champions. Now, a major sporting event we can look forward to on BBC television over the next four days is the World Figure Skating Championships, which have just got underway in Ottawa. British eyes, of course, will be on Robin Cousins, our European bronze medalist, and in a moment we can see how he made out in the compulsory figures, the first phase of the men's championship. But as well, these... <laughs>